Hello, I hope you're having a great day. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Danae and I am a flower farmer in zone five. I'm in Iowa and right now I'm considered zone 5B. So I'm standing in front of my perennial field and then I have lavender and then over there are peonies and beyond that are where I put all of my annuals. And four years ago, this was my entire flower farm was just this little area right in here. And since then I have added on and grown and I have some more, more land up there where I put a lot of zinnias and stuff like that. But today, um, I know a lot of people might want an update on life, what has happened, how's my chicken coop, like all the things. Um, but I can only title a YouTube video with one title that really makes sense to search for and look for. So I wanted to talk about this perennial field and the landscape fabric. So three years ago, I planted, I this was all tilled up and I put the black landscape fabric in. I burned the holes. I'm sure there's tons of videos on it. I ran drip line, like all of it. And it went really well. So the first two years, everything, was great. This is a whole row of yarrow. Some holes didn't fill in and just kind of grew up with weeds. I have some lupine in here. Um, I have the pink cone flowers, which I did leave for the birds down there, and they do still have black landscape fabric around them. And then in here, I have just a lot of things like irises, lilies, allium, and just kind of where these leaves are, those are all bulbs. That way I know not to ever till this area. And then if I walk along here, these were kind of my pathways. Um, oh, and I don't know why these are all coming up because it's winter, but they are. So you can see right in here, I just retilled that. So this year, so this would have been the third year of flowers. This perennial field kind of turned into a nightmare. It turned into like a hay field. <laughs> so no flowers came up in this section. I tilled another section down there and a little bit at the bottom. This entire row was yarrow, but as you can see, um, a lot of grass grew up in this row this year. So this year I had a really good year of doing sales, making bouquets and running flowers around. And I don't know if it was the weather, the climate, I just wasn't getting to it in time, but the grasses just took over and I never could get back on top of them. They just got out of control. And then I had all of that black landscape fabric <laughs> and I had the drip lines. And so I actually had to go and over this entire quarter acre, I had to use a weed eater to knock everything down. I then had to pick up all the brush. I moved all of the wood chunks that was holding the landscape fabric down and it was a job. It was a really big job that I didn't want every year. And a lot of these plants come up before anything else in the spring. And then I don't really use them much more through the summer because I'm using my sunflowers and my zinnias and my snapdragons and my lisianthus. This was more like the I have yarrow, pink coneflowers, rebecca. I have the irises, the allium. I have a lot of things that come up in the very beginning of spring. So I was thinking to myself, the yarrow kind of struggles because I would see like a lot of it would be under the black landscape fabric and the plants weren't getting as big as I thought they could if they weren't in the fabric. Um, and I thought, well, if I pull it all up, maybe I can just mow it. So this is a total experiment, but I'm hoping what taking up all of that landscape fabric out of my perennial field and just letting the flowers do what they do. I plan on probably just mowing rows. And like you can kind of see here, like where the yarrow was, it was like spaced in nine inch holes all the way down. And then this was just a walking pathway. And then here you can kind of see like I have my salvia um, and then I did end up tilling at the end of the row because the salvia went so far and then it, it's just been weeds for the rest of the time. The stuff I wanted to grow just wasn't growing. So that has all been tilled and I have a pocket, a pocket 
<laughs> a pocket of seeds and I am going to winter sow the seeds and see if they come up. I don't know if they will. We will see. Um, I did get some lupine seeds. I'm going to do those as well. And I am just going to see how this year goes with, I'm hoping this stuff comes up and then I hope I can just mow it and keep it more maintained. And every spring I'll have the flowers and the rest of the time I can mow it. I have, my lavender did well this year, but I do have 76 holes that I need to plant more lavender because the plants just looked bad and they weren't doing well. Um, if you'll remember my first year I had this was my lavender and I put it way too close together and I should have probably just let that row stay because I ended up digging. These were all just right on top of each other lavenders and it went all the way down and I ended up digging them all up and moving them and a lot of them didn't survive but a lot of them did. And then I have 140 peony plants which you can't see because I cleaned them up and they're all clean. So this is what I consider my perennial field. I did leave my drip, my landscape fabric on the peonies and on the lavender, but they're also spaced a lot further apart. You can see here, there are a lot bigger holes spaced further apart where those six inch spacing and nine inch spacing for perennials, I don't know, just by year three, the weeds i mean trying to pull grass out of a little hole this big i just felt like it was taking over the plants anyway i wasn't getting it getting on top of it all the time and it was such a chore to maintain so i really am hoping that now that that's all gone that i still get plants and i can mow and then mow it down at the end of the season for it to come up the following spring now whether or not that is what will happen you would have to follow along and see um, but I did plant more allium this year and look at this I, <laughs> I hope this isn't a bad thing but it looks like I have some irises trying to pop up out of the ground already she's been warm this year it's been too warm I think so I did cover all of this with leaf mulch this year and then down here, I did plant some more. I think these are irises. I think I did some irises and I did some, well, there's one of my tags. Just a iris mixture. And then of course, if I walk on down here, I can show you, see I've tilled all of this. So this can have seed in it. And then I did leave just the black landscape fabric in there because I do like to leave these for the birds. Um, this was the main plant I noticed the birds really went after. If you look out, I mean, there's plenty of, we have a pl plenty of junipers, we have a lot of stuff for the birds and everything else, but they usually like to pluck off these. Um, I see them in here a lot. So that is kind of how the perennial field went. Year one was great and the plants looked beautiful. Year two, my yarrow was a lot taller. It looked great, but of course there was grasses and stuff that would grow up in between the yarrow. And it just got to a point where it was really hard to get those grasses out of those tiny holes without ripping out my yarrow or destroying my plants. So here we are at the other end. And you can see here, I just, I tilled up all that hadn't grown yet. I'm planning to seed that today. And then that little section. Um, so yeah, so we'll just see how it goes. So the landscape fabric worked for a while and it did quit working. The difference with it is I left it down all year because they're perennials. And so I couldn't really rip it up without taking all of the plants down. So that's what I did this year. But you can kind of see here. Like that is all grass seed. So the I did get all of my lavender weeded. Um, I didn't get it trimmed back like I should have. I'll do that in the spring. But yeah, it had just gotten overtaken with grasses, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to just take it up, and we'll see how it goes next year. But now, if you look over at my annual field. It's bigger. 
<laughs> so if you remember I had I had big grass pathways between the fields and I really didn't use them that much I didn't drive down them or anything else so my dad came out this year and he just plowed all the grass pathways up and then we went closer to the ditch because all of my flowers grew better at the end of the field than they do at the top so I went ahead and, and said I want to go further closer to the ditch so he came out and he plowed all of that up for me and so I have added on yet again I thought last year I had enough like it was enough I had, I had a lot on my plate but we'll see I think this year I might give myself more space every year I just kind of put six foot fabric on top of six foot fabric burnt my holes and it's just not enough walking room so I'm thinking this year I am going to do something a little different I did come out here with my tractor and I did till a little bit just so I knew what I was doing, how to set my tiller, and I went along and just practiced tilling so that in the spring I'd be ready to go. I did till this little area and I put it full of daffodils because I figured they will come up in the spring and then I can just mow this area after the daffodils are gone. So my perennial field has definitely grown. I have another eight feet of like going this way of daffodils and other bulbs and I brought my bulbs in this way and I'm going to plant more seeds. Um, so that'll all be perennial and hopefully it works out for me. I just, I didn't think I could deal with the landscape fabric and the drip lines and all of that anymore. It is perennial. It's the fourth year. It should be coming back. And you're just going to have to follow along to see how well it works. I'm hoping it works. I hope that the plants can compete with the grasses in the early part of the summer, spring, summer when I need them. And then hopefully I can just mow it and then the following year they come up again and I don't have to worry about all the weed eating. And it was just a lot. It was getting to be a lot to weed eat all of that stuff down and clean it all up every spring plus trying to get all my plants in the ground and my yarrow would start coming up and there'd be a bunch of dead stuff around it and it just wasn't working that well so I do think I do think that when I first started it it was very helpful to have the landscape fabric when the plants were just new plants they weren't competing with a lot of stuff I was keeping them really well weeded and I would suggest like that worked out well I our plants do die back down in the Iowa winter so our perennials I mean there's nothing left of them in the winter they die completely back so I was able to rip up my landscape fabric you know because I didn't have all this plant matter on top of them to rip out the root systems so I was able to do that I'm not sure if you could do that in like a warmer zone if your plants don't die all the way back to the ground and I do know I will be fighting with grasses and weeds um, but I was anyway and it was really hard for me to take care of them with all that landscape fabric there it just it was getting to be too much now I've thought about I could bring in a bunch of mulch and make mulch pathways because it, as I mow I'll be probably throwing grass seed into my plants and everything else um, but if I put the mulch down I wouldn't be able to mow and it would be a lot easier just to mow it all off in the fall and hope it comes up the next year so that's what I'm going to try <laughs> okay so that is my struggle that was my beginnings with my landscape fabric my second and third year are pretty good um, but by the end of the third year I was ready to not have landscape fabric anymore it was a huge headache um, so if it goes well if it goes well we'll just have to wait and see if it goes well and I do like it my recommendation would probably be to start your perennials maybe in year one and two and then the winter of year two take your landscape fabric off and go this route if it works well if it doesn't work well I don't even know what I would say I'd probably say start a little garden and keep it weed free full of perennials that you could use <laughs> because that's just how that goes 
So if you were coming just to see how my black landscape fabric worked on my perennial field, that's kind of an update for me. If you have any questions, um, I try to answer any comments and the questions the best I can. I did have a few things up here that I'm thinking of moving to my perennial field. So every year my adjuratum comes back. It's not a perennial, but it self seeds well enough that if I just leave these here all winter long, it ends up coming back. Same with the bachelor buttons. And then I also have some blue sea holly. So all of these things come back every year. And I think the blue sea holly is a perennial. I actually have about eight plants over there in the perennial field. I might dig those up and move them or leave them over here, I don't know yet. But I am thinking I should probably, I might end up taking and moving some of my ageratum in this and moving it into perennial land and then keeping the other stuff for annuals so <sighs> this was you can kind of see before um, the landscape fabric ends there and then it ends up there where all the wood is so this this was my annual field last year and then i had a smaller field over there where those poles are that have my gladiolas in them so i've probably added with this huge strip the other strip over by the ditch and then this area i'm guessing i've added another eighth to a quarter acre to my flower fields next year but like i said i think i am going to give myself bigger pathways now i was wanting to get a mulch layer for my tractor <sighs> and i still do want to but i go back and forth i see a lot of flower farms that look really nice and they will, you know, they have a row of fabric and then they have a row that they mow and then they have a row of fabric and a row that they mow. But I put a lot of flowers in here. So I don't know if I'd have to go up that whole field to be able to have that much space. Um, and then that is a lot more mowing. And I don't know if those people weed eat along each row, but here, if you don't weed eat, I mean, the weeds get and then they get in the holes and then they take over the entire field and it just gets crazy. I don't know if it's Iowa. <laughs> If we have so many natural grasses, um, there's a lot of fields around and just a lot of stuff going on here. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I see a lot of people and I'm like, man, either they have a lot of help or they just can get a lot more done. So I've had really good luck just overlapping all my landscape fabric and then being able to just go through and cut my flowers and they're all really close. The problem is that they're too close. So what I might do this year is take three foot or four foot landscape fabric and overlap it in between the rows that I've burnt holes in and see how that does for me. Um, I might try a little section where I mow because it is fast just to mow. My problem is up next to the landscape fabric where you can't like get it with the mower all the weeds that come up and then they go to seed if you don't get it weeded and that would be hundreds of foot to weeded every week so that is one of those things i'm just still kind of struggling with in my mind <laughs> and then let's see they did put a new pole in here they're supposed to be switching over the electric they haven't quite got to that yet and that electric does go over to this chicken house so i haven't really done I haven't done anything with that this year. I'll go up and I did turn one of my zinnia fields into my tulip field this year. So I left all the zinnias for the birds so that they could have seeds or whatever. I did take down my sweet pea fence. I might be done with sweet peas. I don't have very good luck with them. But I left these up so I will have to clean those in the spring. My roses, <laughs> they are all gonna need trimmed up in the spring, but they did, they did okay right here. I mean, I think I had a good year with, but just look at this, like this did, obviously didn't get weed eated last year. And that's just all those weed seeds end up in the holes next to the plants. <laughs> so I'm sure it's something we all struggle with. Um, but here is my, I put a little small deer fence. It's not perfect. 
I was kind of at the end of the season and I wanted to get it up just so that nothing would get in there. And <laughs> it is what it is. But I did put all of my tulips here. I ordered, I think I had five, no. I think I had 4,000 tulips this year. So last year I did 2,000 tulips and I ran out, so I doubled it. So we'll see if I run out this year or not. I don't know if I will. That seems like a lot of tulips to have 4,000. But last year I had 2,000 and I had to mark sold out on my website. And I think I was out of flowers for about a week. And then the allium started popping and some of the later tulips started popping. So this year with 4,000 tulips, I'm hoping I don't have that week where I can't sell any flowers because of course, when you start selling and you have to say sold out, it's kind of embarrassing. Um, so I doubled it and if I sell out this year, I'll probably bump it up again and I'm just gonna find that sweet number where in my area, you know, I can put the tulips in the ground and see what happens there so my little makeshift greenhouse kind of looks the same I did want to get to the roof and all of that but it just didn't happen this year so to kind of recap what's been going on for people that were following along and then I just dropped off the face of YouTube for a while so as far as YouTube goes as far as my very first video that I ever did the day that I decided to be a flower farmer I came out here I video my excitement I ran around the farm with all these ideas and I said I was going to be a flower farmer and I wanted to document and video the whole experience because I just thought it would be a really cool thing like if like as it went to like see the progression of it from where it started to wherever it ended up and so I did that and I think it was two years ago I actually videoed every single day so i not only got all my seeds started and got them all planted and got my landscape fabric down and got my drip line in but i also took a video and every night i would edit the videos and send out the videos for everybody to see what was going on and then i decided well maybe i can cut that back because it didn't change so from my first year things didn't change much i always started I mean I might add some flowers to the mix or I'd find different varieties that I liked um, I learned like my zinnias did a lot better up here and towards the bottom of that field than they did at the top like there's things that I'm learning and I'm adjusting and I'm kind of changing them but once I show you where I'm putting everything the cutting and the bouquet making and the deliveries and all of that is just kind of the same so I started taking pictures and putting pictures of the bouquets on Instagram um, I thought that was a good outlet it was a lot faster and more convenient for me I could take a picture and then I could throw it up there I put together a video on YouTube of a bunch of those pictures all strung together for anyone that just wanted to watch like a string of beautiful bouquets um, but then I got really busy and life happened. Um, 2023 was not the best year, like personally. It was a great year for flower farming. I lost some people that were just really important to me in my life and that takes a toll on you. I had friends that lost people that were really important to them in their lives, which takes a toll on you. And, and I was busy, like I was really busy with the flower farm. Which is a good thing because I like to be busy, especially if things aren't always going right in your personal life. You kind of have an outlet to use up some of that extra energy and things like that. Okay, my my GoPro died. <laughs> Probably because it's too cold out for the batteries and I don't have any extra batteries out there. But what I was telling you is that I just had some like rough rough times this year and that kind of added to the videos because I wanted to get home after all my work and just kind of do the things I needed to do um, in my personal life so I got that done I am going to throw something up on the screen here to let you guys know I tried a few times to tell you I can't I can't talk about it without being a blubbering fool so I will let you know what happened there and just some of those things took their toll on me um, but I have been a lot busier and I do want to do the videos like there's nothing that makes me want to stop doing the videos 
I enjoy doing the videos. I enjoy seeing the progression of the farm. I was actually having to go back to like two years ago to see like when I start my Lysianthus because I pretty much do a lot of the stuff still the same. There are a few tweaks here and there that I do, but most of it is the same, you know, from each year. There might be a few more things. So I am going to try to do more videos this year and just video what I'm doing, the process of what I'm doing. And then, you know, if you've been watching along, you might pick up on the little tweaks that I've changed here and there. Um, I am going to start my Lysianthus here on January 6th. That's when I started it last year and it did really well other than the moles. The moles really got to it. So that's something I might change this year. I've been putting my Lysianthus in really early because it's a cool weather flower. But I did get some plugs after the moles got them last year. And they didn't bloom as soon. But the flowers did a lot better. And the plugs I put in the ground around our last frost date. And the other ones I've been putting in like a month or two earlier. So there's some things like that where, you know, you just try stuff and it works better or it doesn't. So I might do something like that. Um... So I think I am going to do more videoing this year and letting you know on year four, this is what I'm doing. Um, I'll try to go back and review what I did in years one and two. I don't have a lot of footage from year three, so I am regretting not doing as many videos. And I'm hoping at least doing a weekly video, I could sum up, like I walked around today and I could put a lot of footage of me doing the seeds and doing all of that but that's kind of repetitive work and maybe I could do more of an update of what I did this week why and how it's changed from previous years I don't know you could let me know in the comments if that seems like something interesting or not but other than that I do have my tractor um it is currently getting all the stuff done to it that needs done to it to be ready for spring so um I haven't I've mowed with it and I've tilled with it and I do think I want a mulch layer but now I might want a bucket first but then I also think it would be nice to have like a mulcher because there's so many like down trees and tree limbs and it would be I bet it would pay for itself because I wouldn't have to like buy all the mulch and bring it all in I could just mulch up what's already out here and that also would keep what's out here as far as pests, diseases, anything else. I wouldn't be bringing anything in from like mulch from other areas. I'm trying to think if there's anything else <laughs> that you guys might want updated on. Um, if you have any questions, throw them in the comments and maybe I can do an, a video while I'm seed starting and like update you or talk about the subject at hand. Um, it was a great year. I got more subscribers. Um, this year, I already have more subscribers than I did last year before Christmas on my flower farm. And I think that almost all of my subscribers have come back from year to year. So I do think they enjoy the locally grown flowers. Um, and I guess I'll just have to see how this year goes. So anyway, that's kind of a quick update to the end of 2023. I had I have done videos, so I think up until like three or four months ago, there are videos where I kind of talk about my progress. I did want to get out here because I did a lot of, in the last three months, I've ripped up all the fabric and I also ripped up all the fabric drip lines and everything out of all of those other fields so that we could plow it up and till it. So that's kind of been where my fall is at. I did make a few wreaths. I made some Christmas stuff. Not a lot. Not enough to survive. Um, I do want to do more of that next year. But still working up to that. In my mind, I was going to make a bunch of wreaths this winter. But here we are already in seed starting season. So maybe I can kind of mix those two together over the next few months. But that's kind of where I'm at and I'm still going full bore into it. And I hope everybody had a wonderful 2023 and I hope you'll have an even better 2024. I hope to see you in the next one.